Gracious, gracious. It's nice to look at everybody. Yeah. You know, I don't see y'all for six days or so, or longer. No one in particular. Do you want to stand up? Probably not. <laughs> anyway, we're so happy to be here. Always ask the piano player. Yeah. Yeah. Because she knows everything. And the 26th is when we go bowling, yeah, at Buffalo Lanes. So, yeah, so I'm, uh, I'm going to challenge a few of you men to a uh, little bowl off. I haven't bowled for 30 years, at least. 
Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, the shopping's better there. Yeah. Yeah, we checked out the place. It's very nice, and the bar's open that hour. No, the bar's up separate from the separate from the rest of it. So, so that's all really good. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, uh, Alton, Matthew, if you if you show up, Tony, I'd say let's take a lane. Okay. What's that? Probably not. <laughs> Haven't done it for 40 years. I'll keep score though. Then I'll be better than a 50. Yeah. Anyway, it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, all the kids are, are uh, of course, we hope they're, they're all there and all of our young adults as well. And uh, I'm talking about the 26th, I believe. I believe right. It's like, okay, so it is the 26th. All right, put on those bowling shoes. Put on those bowling shoes. I don't know that one. Okay, no. And that verse, that chorus one more time. You want to come up and sing it with us? Come on up here. <clears throat> Even the children know, Lord, even the children know how great and wonderful you are. And we need the reminder every single day, Lord, that you are in control, in charge, and that men are acting on free will, sometimes in heinous ways, often in evil ways, against your beloved but my God, how great thou art. And those who keep that in mind and in their hearts will persevere and come to be with you when the time is right for them. We bless you and thank you for your goodness and your greatness in times of goodness, in times of, of successfulness, and in times of terror and trouble. Help us be those who bring the truth and bring your love to every situation, Lord God, we ask in your name, Jesus. And again, we pray that prayer that you taught the disciples, our Father, our Father who, who art in heaven, heaven. Hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And leave us not into temptation, temptation, but deliver us from evil. For, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. And ever. And ever. Amen. 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 Beth, would you please pray for the people of Ukraine? Okay. Lord, we lift up the people of Ukraine today, and we just ask that you continue to give them courage and, and strength and keep them safe. And just uh, give them your peace to know that so many people are rallying behind them. And just let them feel you in the midst of all of their troubles, Lord, so that they, they can bear their burdens easily. Um, we just ask for your, your, your armies to go with them, your angel armies. And just, yeah, just be with them, comfort them, strengthen them. Exactly, Amy, exactly. Amen. When I 
break for those people who are enduring such things, Lord, whose loved ones are already gone and who, who yet persevere. Let us never cave in to the notion, Lord, that it's just too complicated. 
mobilize us, Lord, as a nation, as praying people, as a world. Mobilize us to do all that you would have done for the least of them. We ask for that in your precious and wonderful and holy name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Seems like it ends the conversation, or it's a pretty nice way out of a conversation if you could say, well, it's complicated. Yeah. So is life. So is marriage. So is guitar. Yeah, it's complicated. Doesn't mean you don't do it. And uh, we have to be on the right side of history with this one. That doesn't mean that we send, send our troops over there to to confront Putin, but uh, it does mean that we do everything in the world that we can do to help those people secure their freedom and keep their freedom. The big excuse here is, well, I don't want to start World War III. I hear that all the time. It's already started by a guy who doesn't care about letting off a bomb. He doesn't care about that. That's, that's his ace in the hole small nuclear bomb. You see, I've done it once. I'll do it again. So, I don't want to downcast anybody here, but we're dealing with an evil tyrant who will, who will stop at nothing to, to turn that part of the world into his again. And if he doesn't succeed at that, what's he got to lose? If there's no hell, if there's no God, there's no hell, right? What does he have to lose? His crappy life trying to maintain control as a, as a dictator? That can't be fun. What's he got to lose? So the person that we're being careful not to annoy, we're being careful not to upset, is already upset, already annoyed, and nothing we can do can appease him forever. So I feel like opening the church some evenings. If you don't have a key to the church and you want to come to the church and pray, tell me and we'll get you a key. And uh, I might just have to, I might have to come a couple of evenings or so and, and just be here so that people can come and pray here if they'd like to. Those people are our people. They're our people and they're worthy they're worthy. Pray for those good people. God bless them. God bless them. They are, they are, they are not going down without uh, a long, hard fight, if that's what it takes. Yeah. Is there a happy song we could sing? <clears throat> that's what We're going to sing Joy of the World. And this is dedicated to some very, very, very brave people who are fighting to keep their country. God is on your side. <laughs>
seated. Deuteronomy 26, 1 is when the directions were given to the Hebrews. And in, in there is the Ten Commandments. It's just, you know, all the information given to them on, on what to do and why. And this is an exercise in gratitude. When you have come into the land that the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance to possess, and you possess it and settle in it, you shall take some of the first of all the fruit of the ground which you harvest from the land that the Lord your God has given you, and you shall put it in a basket and go to the place that the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name. That'd be a truckload these days, wouldn't it? These are small farmers. You shall go to the priest who is in the office at that time and say to him, Today I declare to the Lord your God that I have come into the land that the Lord swore to our ancestors to give us. And when the priest takes the basket from your hand and sets it down before the altar of the Lord your God, you shall make this response before the Lord your God. This is what they did every harvest. A wandering Aramean was my ancestor. He went down into Egypt and lived there as an alien. Few in number, and there he became a great nation, mighty and populous. When the Egyptians treated us harshly and afflicted us by imposing hard labor on us, he cried out to the Lord, the God of our ancestors. The Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. The Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with a terrifying display of power and with signs and wonders, and he brought us into this place and gave us this land. A land flowing with milk and honey. So now I bring the first of the fruit of the ground that you, O Lord, have given me. You shall set it down before the Lord your God and bow down before the Lord your God. Then you, together with the Levites and the aliens who reside among you, shall celebrate with all the bounty that the Lord your God has given to you and to your house. And that is the word of God. God loves a cheerful giver. 2 Corinthians 9, 7. We might as well just take up our offering. <laughs> right. Thanks to you for this wonderful church, for these precious children, for these wonderful friends. Thank you for sustaining this place, Lord. We want to be here another hundred years, if you don't mind. Bless us in that, uh, that goal and be glorified, Lord. Thank you that you bless those who give with a cheerful heart, ten and a hundredfold, Lord. Amen. 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 That is a bright spot of this day, I tell you. You wonder why we take, take an offering up? It's just to watch these kids do what they do. Some of them are pretty good. You know, this one here, she walked up to me and was like, talk a good story, you got something to give me. <laughs> you who dwell in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, 
You will say to the Lord, my refuge and my stronghold, my God in whom I put my trust. Because you have made the Lord your refuge and the Most High your habitation. No evil will befall you, nor shall affliction come near your dwelling. For God will give the angels charge over you to guard you in all your ways. Upon their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. You will tread upon the lion, the cub, and viper. You will trample down the lion and the serpent. I will deliver those who cling to me. I will uphold them because they know my name. They will call me and I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. With With long long life life will I satisfy satisfy them them and and show them my my salvation. salvation. Lord, you are with our brothers and sisters across many waters, even as they strive for life and the return of peace. May they continue to live out this promise. Amen. Amen. The next reading is from Romans 10. Romans, which is a really, 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 really great letter to read. Even if you just started at verse 8. But it's a, it's a Paul's words to the Romans, to the, to the Roman believers and unbelievers. And it's a wonderful, beautiful. The word is near you on your lips and in your heart. That is the word of faith that, that we proclaim. God has shed abroad his grace. And as he promised in the Old Testament, he has come to be near us by the Holy Spirit. The word is near you on your lips and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified, made right. And one confesses with the mouth and is also saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The gospel reading is from Luke 4, 1 through 13. Hebrews 4, 12 says, The word of God is alive and active, always pertinent. The Bible, it is the truth, eternal given by eternal God to his creation. Isaiah said to accomplish his purposes, God's purposes. What is that purpose? That we would be saved for eternity and live our best life here and now. As we live out this life, we continue to discover or understand additional truth in the same passages, some truth, same truth through new eyes. As we grow in our empathy, and our experiences, that's what happens. Jesus has just been baptized in the, and the Holy Spirit has lit upon him as he rose from beneath the water. A dove rested upon him and a voice was heard to say, this is my son, the beloved. With him, I am well pleased. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan after his baptism and was led by the Holy Spirit in the wilderness where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all those days and when they were over, he was famished. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. And Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live by bread alone. Then the devil led him up and showed him in in an instant all the kingdoms of the world, all the nations and their, their people. And the devil said to him, To you I will give their glory and all this authority, for it has been given over to me, and I give it to anyone I please, if you then will worship me. It will all be yours. Jesus answered, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, the highest spot, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, 
He will command his angels concerning you to protect you, and on their hands they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. And when the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. The word of Lord. Lord, we thank you for this piece of history that you made certain was written down for us to see and to know. Bless us as you open our eyes and our hearts to recognize all of this, to celebrate your choices so that we can make better choices ourselves. We thank you for these things, precious Jesus. Amen. Please be seated. I'm just going to give you some observations and then some takeaways. If you are the Son of God, oldest trick in the book, sow self-doubt into someone. Challenge their paradigms. You know what a paradigm is? It's like a, one paradigm of mine is murdering is wrong. That's a paradigm. It's a firmly held belief. I believe that. And, part that, and the, our paradigms steer us in life because we, we live out our life according to them. It's, it's wrong to abuse someone intentionally. It's wrong to, to lie and cheat. Those are paradigms. When there's a paradigm shift, they, as, as it's called, you recognize something that you hadn't held to be true. Okay? Self-doubt, challenge. If God really loved you, he wouldn't, make, he wouldn't make you go through this. That's what the devil will say to people. You know what else he says to them? The ones that get out and, do, and even do well. It was easier being back there. It was easier being in prison, remember? No car insurance to pay. You know? If you really mattered... You wouldn't be in this situation. But you don't matter. If you were really as pretty as you think you are, if you were really as smart as you think you are, well, you're not. So there's that. In sports, it's getting into their head. Getting into their head and, get, and throwing them off. That's what it is. You know that. It's throwing them off so that, boom, so that you can win about but that's a that's a that's a fair fight with the enemy it's about getting eve to believe something that wasn't true against the paradigm that god is good and he loves us and he he gives us all good things if god really loved you he wouldn't withhold all this from you like i said oldest trick in the book satan has come corrupted humanity and now God who he knew Jesus who he knew he was in heaven when Jesus was there he tried to come against the throne of God and he got his butt kicked he got kicked out thousands of years before this and he took a third of the angels with him he promised them things too I suppose now they're demons instead of angels <laughs> angels of darkness Satan has corrupted humanity and now God who he knew is in human form this should be fun maybe he thought that they worked with Adam and Eve game on now the devil's had 4,000 years watching these humans covet each other's kibbles and this one's 40 days hungry so what's he say I'll get him to do something selfish Remember John 3.16? For God so loved the world. The world. Not for God so loved himself, that for God so loved the world. God is completely unselfish and Jesus is 100% God and he wouldn't do magic 
to serve himself. He couldn't be selfish and serve himself. Instead, he was subjugating the flesh. And Jesus quotes Deuteronomy 8.3, one does not live by bread alone, but by sacrifice, integrity, and purity. When that didn't work, the devil led him up and, and showed him and in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, to you I will give their glory. 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 Jesus left his glory in heaven. He came down and washed the feet of his disciples and taught us. For it has been given over to me. And Jesus knew that. Authority had been get, given over to the devil at the Garden of Eden. And I will give you all of that if you will worship me. So we offer Jesus the power and the authority over the earth and everything in it. If I corrupt them, uh, if a corrupt person corrupts you, what do they get out of that? They imagine that they're your equal. Right? If a corrupt person corrupts you, they have conquered you. They, they are now at least your equal. So we offer Jesus the power and the authority over the earth. And this is a great strategy to get Jesus to defect. Now, what? That's impossible. Well, it was impossible. But can't blame a devil for trying, huh? If Jesus defected Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, if Jesus sinned, now, we don't think about this much. The devil would have turned God against himself, and a house divided cannot stand, the Bible says. Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, Jesus said. If Jesus had caved in to sin, now we're going pretty deep here, it would be the end of all goodness. There's just one thing that God won't share. You know what that is? He won't share you or me with something else that we want to worship. He won't share us. It says in the Ten Commandments, I am a jealous God. That, that hung me up a little bit because I thought, wait a minute, jealousy's not good. Jealousy's bad. Well, he created me. He's allowed to be jealous. <laughs> he owns me. He won't share me or you with any other God. It is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. The commandment reads, thou shalt have no other God before me, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. In verse 3, in the, in the verse 9 in the pericope, when that didn't work, the devil took Jesus in the spirit and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, the holiest place. If you are the Son of God, if you really are the Son of God, and I'm, I've got my doubts about this because you just look like a human in the flesh, Jesus is probably rolling his eyes. Then just throw yourself down because God will send his angels to help. And Jesus answered him saying something that God said to me, the sternest words that God ever said to me, and that is, don't put me to the test. Jesus answered him saying, it is said, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Deuteronomy 6, 16. And the devil then departed from him only to return at an opportune time. Three takeaways. God does nothing to serve himself. He's the most unself-serving entity anywhere. He does nothing to serve himself. He created all of us in an act of love, he gave us free will in an act of love, he came and rescued us from ourselves in an act of love, and he's not spitting anybody out. If on the deathbed, on a cross next to him, when a guy said, Jesus, remember us when you come into your glory, Jesus said, the day will not pass, but you will be with me in, in paradise. That's a foxhole confession. You're already on a cross dying. 
and that guy made him into heaven. God does nothing to serve himself. All powerful, selfless, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Second, our enemy is the father of lies. He's the opposite of God. It's all for him. And he'll lie about everything. He does that, and that's how people turn into devil worshipers and uh, other kinds of worshipers that, that keep them out of heaven. The devil is the author of lies. And the last takeaway, hatred, greed, dishonesty, self-pity, and apathy, these are all demonic. That's why the Bible says, purge your heart of these things. Purge your heart of these things. Oh, they're still going to come at you. Oh, it's still going to rain in season. It's still going to snow in North Dakota. But purge your heart of these things because if you let them take root and fester, you will not find your peace in Christ. You'll be worshiping something more convenient. And I'm not preaching to you. I'm saying that these are the facts. Pray with me. Lord, we thank you. We thank you that the wily devil could not get you to, to act against the Father. In this world, you said, I do only as I see the Father do. And that was the key to you living a sin, sinless life and being able to die for our salvation, for our sins. So thank you for that, Lord. And thank you for those friends here who understand this scripture and understand this message and who are living their lives in a way that marches closer to you every single day, Lord God. We all fall short, but we don't fall short in our desire to please you and to do better every day, every day. Bless us in all of this, Lord. Keep my beloved here safe and sound. Keep them safe on the highways. Holy Spirit, be so encompassing around each person here, the children and the adults alike, that they would hear your voice to say, stop, slow down, go right, go left. All of the things that you can say to us to keep us out of harm's way, Lord God, I pray for that for them. And I ask because you've told me that I can ask for that. And we trust you for that, Lord God. Bless you, Lord. Be with us as we have fellowship and as we also teach with uh, the young adults here as well. Be glorified. We love you, Lord. And we thank you for being our God. Amen. Holy cats.
grateful today that you have seen fit to draw us to yourself. Not by our first choosing, Lord, but by your first choosing when you created us and then came and went to a cross for us, Lord God, and then wooed us, placed us in circumstances where we would seek you and find you. Thank you, Lord, for that. Thank you for grace, grace that is shed abroad, as the Bible says, poured out over all the world for all time to those who will simply say, I believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, that he died for my sins and was risen on the third day and awaits my arrival in heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless us in these things, precious Jesus. Be with us today as we worship you and enjoy one another. Be glorified. Amen. 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 Please be seated. Yes. Song number two nine six. <laughs> 